Dear friends, welcome to Indian Meditation Center. We have come here to the Vojo's Vijnana Pairava Tantra, the Shiva Sutra Meditation 85. Thinking not, no thing, thinking no thing, will limited self unlimit. Thinking no thing, you are not thinking about anything. You are not thinking about anything. No thought should come in your head. Will limited. The limited. When you are in the thoughts, you are limited. And if you are not thinking about anything, the self becomes unlimited. So, the world is very open. So, this is the meditation. What is the meditation? When you don't think about anything, then what happened? You won't be limited, you will be unlimited, you will be wide open. So, this is the Sutra 85, Lord Shiva says to Pavati. So, thinking about no thing, thinking about no thing, the self becomes unlimited. So, here, what is a thought? Everybody is having a thought, thinking from morning to night, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. So as a thought arises, what happened? You become limited to that thought. There are hundred thoughts which limits you, thousands of thoughts which is limiting you. If you have a thought you are a Christian, if you have a thought that you are a Hindu, then you are limited with the Christian philosophy. You are limited with the Hindu philosophy. You are limited with the Jain philosophy. So, if you have a thought, it is a limit. You won't be able to come out of that limit. That limit is a barrier. That limit is not a connection to the other things. So, when you have a thought, it is a limit. For Christians, the non-Christians are opposite. For Hindus, non-Hindus are opposite. See, for example, the Christians, they believe that only they can gain or they can attain the freedom of uh, kingdom of God. They can never conceive or think that Hindus or any other religion people can go and experience the kingdom of God. For Hindus and Jains, they have a thought, that limited thought. What is their thought? Only it is for their religious people can experience bliss. And this is what the Mohammedians, the Islam, Muslims, they think only their religion is superior. So once you are identified with their thought, then what happens? You are against some thought. When no thought is there, then what happens? There are no barriers, everything is open. But when you are limited, when you have a thought, and when you stick on that thought, when you live on the thought, then the opposite becomes, uh, it is against you. Who is a re religious man? A religious man is not a Christian. A religion man is a, not a Hindu. A religious man is a man who doesn't think. But all the religious men, they think, they identify themselves with one particular religion. So, religious man who doesn't think and he is a religious man cannot be a Hindu or Christian or Muslim. Because once you identify with one religion, when you are limited with one religion and the other becomes opposite. This is an example you can take. There is a, what, is a, what do you call him? You can call him as a quacker. Who are the quackers? Uh, they are Christians, a branch in Christians. They uh, never get angry. They're the society of Jesus in that they call themselves as society of friends. They are never supposed to be angry, they never beat, they never shout. So, one particular quacker, he was having a mool cart. He was going by and the mool cart after a particular distance it is not moving at all. He was very angry, he wanted to beat the mool cart, but being a quacker, a Christian who is not supposed to get angry, he 
was warning the mole saying that uh, if I am a Christian, I am a Quaker, I am not supposed to get angry, but if you do not move, then I am going to sell you to a non-Christian who is going to beat you. So, for Christians, the opposite is limited with this religion, the opponents are bad, the opponents are they are they, they, they are not uh, they are not uh, so it is a limit they have a limit they cannot come with that limit so the mind always carries the thought the by byproduct of the mind is thought the byproduct of the mind is prejudice the byproduct of uh, mind is uh, your certain things of principles or certain things your reaction your prejudices, everything, these are the byproducts of the mind. So, these byproducts of the mind does not allow you to be free, it limits you. For example, uh, you take a flower, a rose flower, a rose flower is there. You can give lot of explanations, rose flower is beautiful, the rose flower is nice, the rose flower is good, but whatever you say the rose flower does not understand, there is no meaning for the rose flower. The rose flower exists as it is, whether you say the rose flower is good or bad, rose flower is rose flower, even if you say rose flower is bad, that rose flower is a rose flower. So, whatever the thoughts which comes to you, whatever you explain, it does not matter, the rose flower is the rose flower. So, all these uh, byproducts of thought, uh, mind, the thoughts and uh, prejudices, everything which limits you, which does not allow you. You are not total when you are limited with the thoughts, when you come out of the thoughts you are unlimited. So, with the limit of the thoughts, what happen? You are not aware, you are not uh, fully, uh, fully prepared, your alertness is not there, but when you are not in the mind, you are fully alert. See, the two things are there in the body. The body is the outer body and the mind is also a body, a part of the body, but in a subtle way it is part of the body. So, the outer part is the outer body, the inner body is the mind. So, the body and mind two things are there. You can come out of your body, but it is very difficult to get detached from your mind. It is easy for you to come out of, get detached from your body, but it is very difficult to get detached from your mind. So, the body and mind are together, they are not different. So, the body and mind are together, they are not different. So, what happens? The body and mind, at the time of death, the body dies, but you are closely associated with the mind. The body dies, but you are closely associated with the mind. Somebody says your body, about your body, they speak ill about your body. For example, they say you do not look uh, tall, you do not look nice, you do not look handsome, you do not look beautiful, you look ugly. You are ready to accept certain things, but if they say you are a mentally disturbed person, you are a foolish fellow, you are not behaving properly, your mental attitudes are wrong. When they hurt your mind, you become so wild, you become so angry. So, you are closer not with your body, you are closer with the inner body that is the in mind. So, most of them, almost everybody, they are not much attached with the body, but they are very much attached to the mind. So, the attachment to the mind, even when the body dies, the attachment to the mind it does not leave you, you get attached to the mind. So, you are with that mind and inside the body that is inside body. See, when you look at a house from outside, it gives the outer shape of the house. You watch your house from inside, it gives the inner shape. So, the mind is inner and the outer house is for the persons who look from outside that is the body and the inner body is the mind. You are so attached with the mind that even at the death, you are associated with the mind, you are not ready to leave your mind. That is the reason when next birth comes, if you take a birth of a dog, you uh, I mean earlier 
birth you are a dog you are so attached with that mind in the next birth you have the dog's mind so if in the earlier stage you have an attachment towards certain things in the next birth you carry that mind with you the soul is carrying that mind with you because the soul is so much close so much associated with the mind with that vibration you take some other shape in the body some other body after your death so the separation of the mind from you separation of body is quite easy but separating you from the mind it is possible only by meditation it is a deep surgery you have to do and the deep surgery of separating mind from you it is the meditation people try this meditation some people they go deeply try try then what happens so suddenly they come out because once they go go through the meditation and when they try to think no thought having no thought is the meditation what is meditation without thinking anything is called meditation thinking about no thing is called meditation thinking nothing is called meditation so if the object is there you can look but uh, uh, think at no thing no thing is there is it possible so that is called meditation and as you do the meditation the mind can get separated but people do the meditation artificially nobody is taking so deep because meditation as they go in for meditation when they want to they try their level best to think of no thing then what happens they go in a state of uh, uh, abyss they go deep they feel uh, that they are experiencing death because they cannot identify with anything only if there is a mind they can identify they are hindus they are this and that when they disassociate disassociate with the mind then what happens they lose the identification they feel that is uh, they are that is the already they are dead so immediately they come out come out of that uh, meditation state and say it is not possible because i feel like i am dying i feel like i don't have any identification so to just have a security this once again they think so one five minutes is it possible for you know for starters just to meditate think about no thing suddenly some thoughts keep coming all the thoughts which is coming to your head you are associated with that and it is a barrier and those barriers will never allow you to be free be in total so basically many are trying this meditation in tibet uh, there is a, they are called kons uh, that is the certain gurus they teach their disciples how do they teach their disciples they ask their disciples they ask them try to find your face not the face which you have this face is only for your body this is face they say try to find your face that is before your birth what is your face and the disciple keeps trying 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 he comes and says to the master is it this face or that face then finally concludes that it is not possible for him to find so he is not thinking at all so his thoughts has gone so he comes to the ma- master and he says i am not able to find and the master can able to see the vac- uh, complete uh, you know emptiness in his eyes then he says yes uh, this is what you should not think you have to stop thinking stop thinking is the first step of the meditation and once you are successful then uh, the world opens to you then the entire existence comes to you for example this cup is there or a stone is there the stone it doesn't have a language it doesn't speak to itself it doesn't chatter is doesn't think it is just to open it is waiting for you to come in but you when you see the rock if you keep thinking thinking you won't be able to communicate with the rock the existence the trees are there the sun is there the moon is there the entire planet is there none is thinking none is planning none is talking then how can you speak with them when you are chattering with yourself there is no communion between you and the existence which is the existence whatever you see the air the water the sky the trees the mountains the rivers the dogs elephants none is thinking none is talking 
then what happens you keep talking when you keep talking what happens it becomes a total wall you are surrounded with the wall then whatever they are ready to reveal you are not able to understand the sun is revealing something the mountain is revealing something the trees and plants and the dogs and animals each one is revealing something but as you keep thinking 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 what happens nothing is coming to you because you are surrounded with the wall the language of love is silence the language of love is not words the language of love is not thinking even if two lovers are there they keep chattering inside their head they keep asking to each other do you love me do you love me do you love me and the boyfriend or the girlfriend have to give an explanation he has to give an intellectual explanation yes i love you because i purchased and gave you a necklace i i love you because i bought you and gave you a bike so all these things they keep on intellectually talking talking but no one is able to understand only in silence love flowers silence is the language of lovers the boy or the girl or the husband or wife or uh, you know the couples or friends when they are silent both of them are in silence they will be able to mix you can find in lot many places you feel the lovers feel the agony the pain they just want to make a confirmation whether their lover is loving they are very doubtful this doubtful keeps on continuing till last because of what because of each talking with each other not with each other they are talking to themselves when you are in the thought nothing can penetrate your thought because it is something like a like a very heavy wall made of uh, made of iron nothing can penetrate your thoughts so the lovers are there two of them are there each one is not able to penetrate others others thought so what happened he lives in his thought she lives in thought but they give an explanation the vague explanation and the lovers are always in agony the lovers are always in insecure uh, mentality so this continues keep continuing so nothing can stop only when you drop the thoughts only when you drop the chatting that love flowers god knows only one language that is silence it is not sanskrit it is not the christian uh, you know in christianity they preach in islam they do uh, they talk and pray uh, prayer is basically it is meant silence god knows only silence god doesn't know arabic god doesn't know latin god doesn't know sanskrit the existence power they don't know that language in the in the world totally 4000 languages are there none of the language they exist in knows they exist in knows only one language that is silence love can blossom only in silence this is the secret of the truth once you stop thinking then what happen you can find yourself inviting you can find yourself you are ready for anything then you find everything is emerging in you everything is loving you then you don't have the feeling of nobody is loving you only when you drop the thoughts what happened you come out of yourself and you are open you are inviting every all the existence to come into you then what happens you feel all the rivers are coming and just joining in the ocean you find everything coming into you the trees and plants and the moon and planet and stars everything comes under you then you find there is nobody else except you you are the only person and everything is inside you when there is uh, no i or there is no you there is nobody is there everything is you because you are open you don't think then what happens when no yous are there there is no meaning of i so you become everywhere or you become nowhere buddha says you are nowhere and uh, it is um, uh mahavir uh he says this philosophy he says kaivalya it is called kaivalya or uh, you feel uh, brahmashmi you are the god you feel you are the god when you feel you are the god when no thoughts are there when no when you when you when you are able to do meditation and through that when you are able to drop all the thoughts 
then what happens what is flowering inside you you become one where everything is emerging inside you everything is coming inside you you will become a receiver and then you will never complain that you nobody loves me because you are everything there is no anybody is there so after that once you experience this meditation with no thought then you find the body and the mind are the instruments with which you use the instruments but now which are using you the body is using you the mind is using you you become a slave and through the meditation with no thoughts the mind is your slave and the body is your slave you are using the mind and the body according to what exactly your needs are still now the mind is using you the body is using you so this particular thinking about no thing thinking about no object is it possible yes it is very much possible once you are able to do that your life is completely transformed your past is out because in the past you are living with the thought in the past you are living with the mind once you drop the mind through the meditation then you are a new person the world is gone you are no way connected then you find the truth in this world then you find the total difference in your life so people deceive some people keep on laughing smiling and they say they are very comfortable no as long as the thoughts are there they are deceiving themselves they are cheating themselves uh, they are just uh, you know they are acting but in truth only when you drop your thoughts the drop the uh, the thoughts because once you have a thought you are always have something against suppose if you say i am a chameleon and you have not uh, south indian then north indians are bad suppose if you have a thought i am a christian then all hindus are bad suppose you say you belong to one particular uh, caste then other caste becomes uh, wrong so all these thoughts when it is uprooted then you uh, get identified with those thoughts and you are limited by yourself and suppose if you say you are a vegetarian then all the people who are eating non vegetarian are bad so suppose if you are saying i i, I am theist i believe in god and whoever don't believe in god they are called criminals according to your mind thoughts so drop your thoughts drop your mind and how to drop the thoughts only through meditation you can drop the thought once you drop the thought you are totally free so far when you are studying when you are working all with the thoughts you are doing none of the work is perfect but with no thoughts you do any work that work would be a classic work that work will be the extraordinary work you feel so energized because all the existential power you are able to speak because with no thought you are total silent total calm you are totally inviting you are able to uh, communicate not only with the rock you are able to communicate with the trees and plants you can find everything dancing and everything talking to you there you become the entire universe entire the existence comes under you and you are one with that there you are the god you are the symbol you are the existential power there is no you when there is no you the i gets destroyed when you say you are nowhere then it means you are everywhere this is opposite but opposite is partly true you become one so this meditation when thinking about no thing no thing you have to think when thinking about no thing yourself becomes unlimited it opens up once it opens up all other things will come inside you everything will come inside you once everything comes in inside you you become a god you become a, a existential matter so with this meditation everybody have to do this 85th meditation is very important now we shall go for a tamil version